everyone, my name is Barbara and I would like to welcome you all to our latest Novage webinar episode. In this week's episode, creating a building in vector works without wall and uh, design the buildings you want by modeling with vector works 2014. Presenting this webinar is Jonathan Pickup, an architect trained in New Zealand and in the UK with more than 30 years of experience. He has been writing and producing Battleworks manuals for more than 15 years. Before we get going, here's an overview of what we do at Novage. Novage is one of the largest online design software stores. We offer huge assortments of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's need. Put us to the test and come visit us at www.novage.com. This is where you can find both the manual written by Jonathan on free modeling in Vectorworks and the latest Vectorworks 2014 at the best price. If you want to get more Vectorworks training, we suggest you visit Jonathan Pickup's own Archoncad, the premier provider of third-party manuals and training resources for Vectorworks. You can find it at learn.archoncad.com. At Novage, we also curate a very helpful blog with the latest software information and the best interviews. This week, for instance, we focus on how to make it after architecture school. We, all, we are always on the edge of technology and design. So follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. And if you join our network, you won't miss another special or another webinar ever again. Coming up two weeks from today, and not one week, two weeks, Rendering, Animation, and Keyshot uh, Cloud. The new version of Keyshot is almost here, and in our next webinar, we will introduce the new interface and the all-new Keyshot Cloud to find and share your most loved Keyshot Pro 4.3 resources. Last but not least, today's presentation is free and is being recorded live. If you want to re-watch this or any webinar episode, you can find it on YouTube and Vimeo channel under the name Novage. And now, Jonathan, I think uh, I'm going to give you all uh, um, the power, uh, and I will uh, change, uh, switch um, the screen, and, um, you know, uh, dazzle us with a wonderful presentation. I know we're all very excited. Now, I should have received an okay. invite okay. It's to fine. make me the presenter. It's so you just need to yeah. make me the presenter. Here we are. So yeah. show my screen. Yes. There and Barbara, you should now see my screen. It should have I, four pictures I sure of a do. building on it. I sure do. It looks great. Well, that's what we're going to do today. I'm not sure I'm going to get the chance to do all the rendering for this, so I'm going to keep this file handy so that I can show people what we're going. But this is the building that I'd like to build, uh, and it's got no walls in it. It actually hasn't got any roof. There's no walls. There's no columns. The only thing I have done is I've used a couple of doors and windows. So let's get started with that. I've got a file here, which is a, a blank file, but it's just got a little starter on it for me, just so that I know whereabouts to build my building. So I'm going to use some Vectorworks 3D tools that I've got. I'm going to start with a rectangle tool. The rectangle tool, uh, if you've used Vectorworks lately, you'll notice it's got this new push-pull mode where you click to start, click to finish, and then you can just go back to the rectangle you've created, grab hold of that, and you can pull it up. And you can type in the distance you want as well. I'm going to use millimeters if everyone's happy about that. But I've made that about, I don't know, 14 feet high or something. And it's just quite quick with Vectorworks. You click, you um, create your rectangle, and then you can just pull that rectangle to the height you want. I'm going to change to another view. I'm going to use a couple of quick keystrokes here. So if I do use any quick keystrokes and people need to know what I'm using, don't forget to type your questions, and we'll have a, I'll answer them as soon as I can. So I'm going to build a building with three main parts, three wings if you like. And I'm also using the existing objects to snap onto. So that helps me to get that building about half the height. Now Vectorworks 2014 has a really nice 3D modeling tool called the Taper Face tool. This Taper Face tool allows you to define a reference plane, or a reference face, 
then a face to taper, and then you can type in the taper angle that you want. In this case here, I want to reference the back face of that object. If I use my option on my Alt key, I can click on that back face, then click on the top face, and I want to taper that down by about 8 degrees, and there it is. I can do the same with this one. So I can use the Alt key. I want to reference that front face, that one there. I want that about 16 degrees. So I'm going to turn that round a bit more. Yeah, it's looking the way I wanted it to. So from back to my taper face tool. So that face is my reference. This is the face I'm going to taper. Now that's going to pull that, that face out from the bottom. If I don't want to do that, then Go back to the Alt key, use the bottom as the taper face, and then click on that face, and I can taper that face by about 8 degrees as well. So that makes it really quick to build your um, bulk model, to, to get most of the model underway. Now before you get started, you could use the push-pull tool, and you could change some of these faces around. You could line those up if you wanted to. I'm just going to undo that with a Control z so work on your building, get it most of the way that you want, do most of the things that you need to do. I find sometimes that if the snapping gets to be a bit of a problem, it's snapping to different parts of the building, you can always disable the snapping. There's a key on the top left corner of your keyboard, it's called the back quote key. You can use that to disable snapping. So I'm going to just pull this one in a little bit more. No, not that one. I want that face. I want to pull that in a bit. And here it's snapping uh, and it's not doing exactly what I want, so I'll just disable the snapping. You'll notice my snaps at the bottom left of my screen, they all go grey. So I can move that to there. So I've now got three parts of my building. These are the three parts that I need, so I'm going to select them all. Back to my selection tool, so I want that face, that face, and that one. So I've got the three blocks, my three solids. Right click and add them together. So they're now added together as one building. Now I think it would be kind of fun at this point if I just hollow out my building. There's a tool I always use for this. A lot of people um, don't seem to think about using this for, for this kind of technique. It's called the Shell Solid tool. I quite like the Shell Solid. And I'm going to give my building about an 8 inch thick wall, about 200 millimeters. Now when you use the Shell Solid tool, you have to highlight the open face. Well, I don't want that face to be open. I actually want the, uns the underside to be the open face, which is holding down the Alt key or the Option key again, clicking on that bottom face, hit the Enter key, and it's now shelled out the entire building. So I've now got a completely open bottom to it. Now obviously I need at some point to build foundations for this. I can build them now or I can build them later. But what I've created is a completely open building inside. I'd like to put some windows in. I'm just going to turn my view around a little bit. There we are. So let's start putting in some windows. Now I'm not going to have time to put in all the windows probably today, um, but we'll see, because it is going relatively quickly. So I'm going to use the automatic working planes in Vectorworks. If you select the rectangle tool, go to the plane up here, choose automatic, we can then really quickly make uh, rectangles on the plane of that building. So let's just delete that because I want to create it at a specific point. So I, make, I have to make sure that that face becomes blue, make sure it stays blue. Hit the G key to create a datum. And then I want to go up by about seven feet. 2100. So that's where I want to start my rectangle. I want to have a rectangle uh, which is about 800 in that direction, about 4 feet in that direction. Click, and that's created a rectangle on the face of my building. If I go back onto that, I can extrude that object, that new rectangle, I can extrude it. So I'm going to extrude that down here by about um, 18 inches, 450 millimeters. So 
And you notice 450 makes it jump off the face of the building, so let's make that minus 450. Now I'm going to hold my finger on the Alt key when I click. All right, let's just do that again, because I think I made a mistake with that. Let's go back to there, hit the G key again, 2100. pull that through my building, and this time I'm going to make sure I hold down my Alt key, and it's going to cut a hole in my building. If you don't hold down the Alt key, or if you don't do it in the right order, then you don't get that hole, but that is an instant solid subtraction. So let's do that again, I'm going to line up that point. So we want to make sure we're touching that face, let's just make sure. I just seem to be snapping to a funny point, that's better. Now my rectangle looks like it's drawing somewhere else in a custom view. I don't like that. That's better. So that's going to be a small window, so let's pull that through the building as well. Alt key, click, and you can see it punches the hole instantly. Now I'd like to make these two windows. I'll just focus on these two to start with. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to then take these two windows and actually manufacture them as windows. So we're going to, uh, what we really want to do is we want to take a copy of those faces of, the, of that model. If it helps, I can render them. It doesn't actually help me at that, this stage. But what I'd like to do is to take a copy of that plane and extrude it. A copy of this plane and extrude it. And that'll allow me to build my window frames. Back to my 3D modeling, and let's look at a tool that I'm going to use called Extract. Now the Extract tool will extract a face of my model, the entire face of the building, or just that plane of the window. Click on it once, Enter key, it is now a polygon. If I go to Model in the menu bar, I could use something like the Extrude tool. Let's make it about 2 inches, 50 millimeters, and that extrudes a small portion of that. I can do the same again, so click, enter, use the enter key on the keyboard, that's my polygon, model, extrude, enter again. Now I need to get that inside face of that window frame, it's the alt key again, or the option key, click, enter, and extrude. This time I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, which is Control E or Command E. Same with this top edge here. Click, enter, and extrude. I've got the four faces. If I select all four, Right click on one of them, and then I can add the solids. So that's created a window frame. Now it's on the same plane as the wall, so in, in some of the rendering modes you won't see the difference. You could use the push-pull tool in Vectorworks, and just pull that back a wee bit. So grab that whole frame, pull it back, say, to the midpoint, and it'll give an inset or a reveal to that window. I'd like to put some glass in it, so back to my rectangle tool. Again, I'm going to be using the automatic working plane. Now at the moment, it's highlighting the front face of my frame. So I click, come up to here, click again. I'm going to extrude that, pull that into the building by about a quarter of an inch, minus six. And so I've now created my window frame, and I've put my glass in. If you've got any textures in your file, you could then start to texture that. I think I've got a, gra a glass texture here. So let's just have a quick render of that. And you can see it's got that slightly blue color for the glass. I could select my window frame. If I've got another texture, I could select the window frame and assign something to that as well. Now, Barbara, just at the moment, I'll just hold it temporarily. I've done quite a lot. Are there any questions about the speed at which I'm going? Am I going too fast? 
I think you're doing great. I think you're doing great. Everybody's following you, and I'll, I'm sending you the question, and um, you know they're popping up, but I will uh, leave them for the the end. Okay. I think you're so, doing great. So okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on and build the other window, and then I'm going to put some more windows in. So let's go. Um, so I'm going to move slightly quicker now. I need my extract tool again. So I need that face, and I'm going to enter this face, enter, that one, enter, and I still need my alt key to get that top edge there. Make sure you've got the right face, click OK, and then enter again. So I've got those four parts, let's extrude that one, and now I'm back to my selection tool, let's extrude that one, I'll extrude this one as well, and that one as well. Add them all together, so I select them all, right click, add solids. So I can do my same trick with the push-pull tool. I won't do this on every window. I'm going to pull that into the midpoint and pull this side into the midpoint and then put my glass in. Now this corner window is a little bit trickier because I've got to make sure I do two bits. The glass on that plane and the glass on this plane. Select them both, add them together, so add solids, and then give them their glass texture. So now we can spin the building around and we can do a bit more to it. Uh, let's put some windows at the back, shall we? Now I keep moving my center of my rotation, and the way I do that is I just click and hold the mouse button down and it moves that little rotation center. So here I've got a part where I want to put in some doors. I'm not sure where I want to put them, I'm not going to measure them, but I want that door to be about 1600, maybe a little bit less, about five feet wide. In that direction, and I want it to be 2100 high again, so again seven feet high. Pull that through my building, Alt key, punch the hole. Now what I'd like to do is build a couple of double doors here. So first of all, let's put our frame in. So back to my extract tool. So enter, extrude it. Now the top one, I'll need my alt, my option key again for that one. And alt or option key for that one as well. Let's add those together. And I'm going to use that push-pull tool to push that door back in. Get it halfway in, midpoint, there we are. And now to build a door. So rectangle tool, make sure I'm highlighting that face there. Make sure that face there goes blue. If you're having trouble, use the Z key to zoom in. Because of what I, it seems to be snapping to a midpoint there. Okay, so that point there should be on the face of that model there. I don't want to go all the way, I want to go to the midpoint. This is going to be my door thickness, about an inch and a half, which we say about 40 millimeters. Now I'm going to put a rectangle on the face of that door frame. I think I've gone to the wrong place for that door frame, so let's delete that and have another go at it. Let me just try that again. I might change my view a little bit so it's easier for me to see the inside face of my frame. That might be easier. I think I snapped to the inside of the, um, the building itself. So starting at that end point there, finishing at the midpoint there, and then pull that through. Now I want to make sure that I'm creating that part. From, I want it to be at the bottom end point there, up to here. So that's a rectangle. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to change the width of my rectangle. So I'd like to have 75 mil or three inches each side. So let's take off a bit of, of each side. That's good. Now from the top, I want to take off 100 and, 
uh, 75 again. So minus 75 off the top, but off the bottom, so I'm going to move those little dot, those there, that's called the box position. If you move those little dots around, it controls the origin of that object. So minus 300 off the bottom, there we are. Now in this case, I can't use my instant push-pull, I don't think. I could try it, see if it works. I'm not always happy that it's going to work. And if it doesn't work with your instant push-pull, then just extrude it and then subtract the solids. So what I've got is I've got a door frame, but I need to put glass in it. So back to my re rectangle tool. Make sure you're highlighting the front face. And I'm going to pull that in here, minus six again, or a quarter of an inch, and give it the texture. So what I've got is a leaf, a door leaf, and a piece of glass, so two objects. And what I'd like to do is to mirror those. So if I use my mirror tool, mirror and copy, or mirror and duplicate, from that corner there, come out, click, and I've created now two doors. So just by duplicating, it's created the two doors. If I make another hole in the wall here, So that was, uh, I think from memory, that was 5 feet, 1,500, and it was 2,100 high. Pull that through, so holding down the Alt key, I've now got two holes in the wall. So what I should be able to do is select all of this information here. Five objects, that's two doors. Uh, if I've got five objects, then maybe I didn't add all my frames together. Oh yeah, sorry, two doors, two bits of glass in the frame. Yeah, just terrible at mathematics. Now I should be able to use a couple of tricks. One of the tricks could be the midpoint to mirror that whole door along, or I should be able to use this one here, the move by points. Make sure you keep the object retention, or keep the original object. So I should be able to use that corner of my 3D model there, bring it down to that corner there, and it should have copied the doors in the right location from the front corner of my model to the front corner of my model, I should now have two identical doors. I can put more windows and doors in if I like. And I think I can line up with this point here on the face of that model. Line up with that point there as well. So I'm just using my smart cursor to help me line up with bits. Click, pull that through. Uh, maybe halfway to that point there, Alt key down, and it punches another hole. So once you've got the started, it should be very quick to go around the model, punching the holes that you want. That's not looking so bad. Make sure that face highlights in blue. So this is 1500, tab, 2100, enter, enter, click, pull that through, don't forget the Alt key, punch the hole. Because what I'm thinking I could do is to grab one of these doors that I've already made. So if I use my selection tool, I can select all of that door, drag that, let's do that again. Let's I'm selecting the background, yeah, let's try that again. Select all those bits, copy them, and I'm going to paste them over here. Now I need to rotate them, so I can go rotate, rotate left 90 degrees, that should bring it to the right point, and then grab it from that corner there, the end point, and drop it there. Just drag and drop, and that should have put those that new door in the same place. So I'm using the same size doors. Now I could have made them into a symbol. That would be easy, that would make them consistent. Um, but you don't have to. I just want to do something really quick. I just want to look at playing with the building. Now Barbara, I'm going to start and do something um, a little bit different now. I'm going to put the front of the building on. But before I do that, are there any questions that I need to deal with?
Okay, I, I know, I think uh, there's a lot of questions coming in, but I don't want to interrupt the flow, so let's keep them for the last. Um, okay. It's um, riveting, and we don't want to interrupt you. Keep going, right. doing what you're doing. Now, the, the version of Vectorworks that I've got has got Windor in it. I'm not going to use Windor. I'm just going to use the standard Vectorworks window object or the standard Vectorworks door object. So I'm just going to line up with that midpoint there, bring out my door a little bit, click, rotate it, click again, so there's my door. So with my door, I'm going to go through some of my door settings. I don't know if I want to open it in 3D. I'm not going to worry about that too much, I don't think. But let's look at the overall width and the height. So I want four doors. So this needs to be about three meters wide, about 10 feet wide. So I'm going to put about four doors in here. It's going to have that sort of configuration. Let's look at bifold double. So I've got four doors in it now. I could put it on my schedule. If this is a door, the other ones are not. The other one's just 3D modeling. I could look at my leaf. It's going to be glazed. There's my thickness. So the top rail, I think I used uh, three inches before. 75 millimeters in the bottom rail, 300. So I've now got doors in Vectorworks that look very similar to the doors that I created in 3D. I'd like to put some side lights in. Uh, just make these a little bit skinnier. Just put some very skinny side lights in. So that should be enough. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to see how I can take this door and stick it onto my building. In fact, what I want to do is I want to make, I want to use this door as a guide to make a 3D object to, to connect it to my building, and then I want to punch a hole through my building. I want to make this like a, a, an entry. I'm just going to change my view a little bit. And let's go to draw a rectangle. So I want to do a rectangle over the face of that frame. Z key might help to zoom in. And that's tricky, it's hard to see, it's that point there. So that's my rectangle. It can be quite tricky to get it exactly where you want it, so you might have to change your view a little bit so you don't get too many lines on top of each other. But that's my outline of my door. I'm going to leave that rectangle because I'm going to use it to cut a hole. But I want to do an offset. So I want to offset that by about a foot. And then I want to make sure that the bottom of that rectangle lines up with the underside of my door. Because I want to project this rectangle onto my model, onto my building. We've got a 3D tool that does that really quickly. It's called the project tool. If I select that rectangle, and there's a red arrow there saying which direction it's going to go, and I click on my model, it projects that rectangle hard against my model. And even if my model's curving, this will project it and stick it on perfectly. This is a really great little technique. They're not added together, so I do need to add those two. So right click, add solids. Now, back to my push-pull tool. The push-pull tool has this third mode, which is the sub-face mode. It allows me to choose that rectangle there, that model, and then I can grab hold of that rectangle and I can pull it through and it now cuts a hole. So I've now created an extension to my building. It's not quite what I wanted. I actually wanted this to project a little bit more so I can grab hold of that face and just pull it out whatever I wanted. Now lately I've been playing with the taper face tool. So I've been selecting that as the face and then tapering this in a little bit. It's kind of fun. Back to my door object, I want a window. Victor just needs to think about my window a little bit. And I'm going to put a window just in this area over here. I'm going to do the same sort of thing I've been doing before. So I've got my window object. Let's have a look here at my settings. Make sure I've got the right height. So um, 900, 
let's make it four feet square, 1200 by 1200. The elevation of the wall is the same. So you might notice I've been using a consistent elevation height in my walls. I'm going to set that window midpoint there, find the midpoint here, the intersection of those two, and there's my window. So I can use the same techniques now. So the rectangle tool, make sure you highlight that face, down to there, offset that. I'm not going to offset it by the same amount. It's going to be a bit less, about eight inches, 200 millimeters. Use my project tool again. So project that face onto that model. Don't forget to add them together. If you don't add them together, you don't punch a hole all the way through when you do your hole punch. So add solids first, and then back to my push-pull tool. Select uh, back to that mode there. So select that rectangle. There's my model. Pull that through. Just make sure you don't go too far. And then the push-pull tool, change modes. Pull this out a bit more. And pull it out by a foot. And then taper the top of it. So that, that, tape that in. Eight degrees. Enter, enter again. So that's starting to get the shape of my other building, isn't it? Barbara, it's looking like the other one did. Yeah, looks good. Let's go back to that. So now the other window. I'm going to do this slightly quicker. I'm not going to uh, explain what I'm doing so much because I'm going to do exactly the same thing I did last time. So back to my window. It's got the settings that I want. So that point, that point, click there, rectangle tool. I'm looking for that face up to that corner. Offset it. and project it. Now I could, to, to speed up my working, what I could do is I could drag this 3D modeling tool set off, change these tools to icons only, and then just make it long and skinny. And that would allow me to really quickly jump between my 3D tools. Now unfortunately that means that you won't know which ones I'm choosing because I'm only going to choose them by their icon. And add those two together. Now punch the hole in it, so back to that mode, so that object, that object, pull that through, and then back to my push-pull, pull that out by 300, I think I said, and then taper the top of it. Just be careful which one I'm tapering. Um, yeah, that top face there, that face, 8 degrees, enter, enter again. So that's starting to come along. I'd like to put some roofs on. So what can I do with my roof? Well, if I use my extract tool again, I could click on that face, enter, and that's extracted that polygon, and then extrude it. Model, extrude, what should we make it, about eight inches? And then I can extend it in the direction that I want. So back to my push-pull tool, I can grab that face there, let's pull that face out, do the same on this face, I think I didn't do enough zeros on that, so let's do that again, so 1200, enter, alt key, grab that face, pull that out, same distance out there, so I've extended my roof out, but what we will find is just in this corner here, you'll find that the extrusion is perpendicular to the roof here. It's not matching the edge of that building. So what I need to do is to rotate, sorry, what I need to do is to taper that face. So my taper tool again, find the underside of that object, which is that one using the Alt key. Then I want to taper that face there. And the angle is minus eight degrees. And that should make it taper straight up the building Let's just see, that seems to be not the one I want. Eight degrees, sorry. Just check it to make sure it's going the right direction. No, I was right the first time. Let's do that again. So Alt, click, Alt, click. Yeah, minus eight. That's better. And the same on this face. 
So the underside, that face, min minus eight, and there it is. So I've straightened up that roof, so it now lines up with my building. I suppose I could put my foundations in now. So let's go to put in my foundations. So I need foundations to go from here to here, and from here uh, up to there, and from there across to there. I'm just drawing rectangles at the moment, and I better not forget the one. I always forget the one that goes out through here. Let's not forget that. So I've just got those objects there. Oh, this one needs to be extended up to that corner. So the bunch of rectangles, add them together, and then extrude them. And you can either extrude them using push-pull, or you can just go model, extrude. This time, don't forget, minus 200. If you don't do minus, it'll come up into the building. We want it to go down. This face here, I created my foundations that went out in line with that part of the building, so I need to use my push-pull, grab hold of that, pull it back to that part of the building, and it's done. I could build some a deck, a, a patio area out here. And I could put some columns on there maybe. Line up that point. So I should be able to get an alignment point there. So that's minus 300 in that direction. I could type it in if I wanted. And 300 in that direction. Pull that up, snap to the top. You might find it easier to snap to that part over there. Then I can use my move by points tool, move one from that corner down to there. I want to create a. What do I need? I need a column. I need a, a column in here or a beam across there. So a beam from there down to here across to there. It would be nice if it had a curve in it, maybe. So back to my arc tool. Um, from that corner to there, and about halfway up, maybe. So I click on that, pull that through, Alt key, and it just cuts the underside of that, that beam away. You could add all those together if you wanted to. Add solids. I suppose I could join some of those bits together, couldn't I? I was just going to put a pergola on top. Just need to make sure how we're getting on for time. Um, if we don't stop soon, Barbara, we're not going to have time for a whole loads of questions and answers. So what I thought I'd do just quickly, I'd quickly start to assemble some drawings out of this. I think I've got enough model. Let's look at assembling some drawings. Later on, we can always adjust the model and create what we need. Sounds like a great idea. You are in charge, Jonathan. Cool. So there we are. That's my front elevation. It's actually a left elevation, but it's the front of my building. So view. I suppose it would be nice if I put a, a crop round up. I'll worry about that later. So view, create viewport. So this viewport name, this is going to be my front elevation. I'm going to copy all of that because I can't be bothered typing it twice. So just copy with my keyboard shortcuts, paste with the other keyboard shortcut. I need a new sheet layer. Plans and elevation. Better make sure I spell it right. What scale? I'd like to make it a little bit bigger. Let's make it one to one hundred. See if it fits. It's a left view. Its rendering is hidden line rendering, and click OK. 
How does that fit on my piece of paper? It doesn't fit too bad. There we are. Let's put it there. And let's update it. So just click on the update button and there's my elevation. So what would be nice is a section through the building. So let's go, we could go back to our model. So let's go back to our model and we could draw a section through here. So let's go view, create section viewport. Now section viewport's not available if you've got Vectorworks fundamentals. Um, I guess let's just hit the, the backspace key because I want to make sure I get all of that part of the building in. And let's put that on sections and elevations. This will be number two. This will be my section. Hidden line, that's good. There's my section. I forgot to change the scale, so let's change that to 1 to 100, so it's the same as the other one. And let's grab hold of it from the bottom corner, touch the one that's already there, and we can line up. Now the only thing that would be kind of nice to finish off, Barbara, maybe is our plan view. Now the problem with doing a plan view in Vectorworks, if you do a straight plan view from the model, you'll see the entire top of the building. What we really want is a, is a plan cut through, right through all my windows. If I select that elevation and I go view, create section viewport, Vectorworks will allow me to create will allow me to create a plan cut through that viewport. So right through my model, looking down, double click to finish. So this is number three and it's my plan. One to a hundred, that's good. Okay. And there's a plan view of my building. And that's quite different than if you tried to do it from the model view. You can have a bit of fun with these. If you put lights in and stuff, you can actually create some really cool views. I think I've got one where I've already done it. There we are. So let's select uh, that one. I think, this, I think some of these need updating, so I'm just going to update them all while we look at the questions, Barbara. It does look great. It's I have kind to of say, fun. look at that update. It is. You make it look so easy. I have to tell Sorry. you. <laughs> well, actually, a lot of the, if, if you learn to use these techniques in Vectorworks, you know the the extract tool and the push pull tool and the instant push pull and the, the automatic working planes. It is really easy to do. I, I try not to make it look too easy, but um, I actually just think that Vectorworks has made some of this three D modeling really easy. Barbara, are there any questions that, that you want to send me to, to answer? Yes, yes. I think I sent you, uh, I signed them to you, but if you don't see them, I'm going to start and reading them to you. Oh, well, I, see the, I see the questions now. Let me just have if a look. If you see through. them, you can pick and choose and, uh, you know, if you have time, we'll answer them all. Oh, there's, Otherwise, quite, oh, there's quite a few questions. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, oh, there was a question, can we type in the roof slope instead of the angle? I'm not sure. I haven't tried that. I always use the angle. I'd have to go back to the model and, and have a play with that one to see whether I can do that. So we want to taper face. We want to taper that, so we're going to go taper face that one, that one, and you instead of the angle, you want to type in 1 in 12. No, it doesn't look like it. it. Looks like it's the angle. Um, how can you use the G key to set a datum? Um, the reason I use the the G key to set the datum is because it then allows me to create a, a point in space that I can measure from. Now, where do I get that from? It's part of the smart cursor setting here, the smart points. And it says set the datum if the mouse stops for two seconds. I always turn that off because I don't want it to create a datum all the time and the G key manually sets it. So that allows you, when you're creating objects, to choose a point, you hit the G key, that's now a datum, so the floating data bar now measures a distance from that datum. So it makes it real easy for me if I set that as a datum down there, I can come up my wall and you can see there's my X direction, 
so this is my X's and Y's, so I can actually choose exactly how high to make my windows. Now someone asked about if I draw, if I punch a hole and then I pull this through, can I type in the distance? Well, you can type the distance in first, then hold down the Alt key and then click. And then that'll, that'll punch a, a specific amount. Um, Rob, if you want to make a shim gap, you're going to have to do some, some trickery with that by making small objects and offsetting them. I think, um, Rob, you wanted to make a shim gap. There's two things I can think of. One is you make a, a small extrusion and then uh, play, it, play, play with it from there. The other way to do it is once you've built your window frame, what about just take using your push-pull tool to um, take you know, a quarter of an inch off all, all the way around your, your frame. You could do that. But remember, Rob, we're not building a, um, an architecturally detailed model. We're building a concept model. So what about in the interim just saying, look, I'll just build the shim gap into the thickness of my timber. I'll worry about it later. I think I've covered this, like this, the temporarily disable snapping. It's the back quote key. You hold down the back quote key, the snaps just disappear. Uh, tw someone's on 2014. The 2D rectangle tool does not have the push-pull button on the toolbar. Um, you'll notice if I change back to a top plan view, I lose the instant push-pull button off my toolbar. As soon as I change to a 3D view, it comes back again. So work in 3D. It's no longer called the, rec the 2D rectangle tool. It is just the rectangle tool. Um, a couple of versions ago, Vectorworks unified all the 2D and 3D tools that it could. So in fact, you can use the techniques I showed you with the rectangle tool. You could actually use them with the circle tool. If we go back to our model, um, I could use the circle tool. I could create a circle here and punch a hole. So it's the Alt key. This is one of the places where you've got to be careful not to punch too far, otherwise you'll go right through both faces of your building. So this is a good one. Disable the snapping, hold down the Alt key, disable snapping, hold down the Alt key, and click, punch a hole. Now that hole will now show up in the plans and in the sections and elevations. Um, there's a question, what are the advantages of this approach over SketchUp? Well, I don't have SketchUp, I don't use it. I like using Vectorworks. Uh, the advantage for me is that it keeps everything in the one program for me. I can then uh, use all the tools in Vectorworks. I think if I go back to my other model, my architectural model, you'll see that I've actually started creating all my details as well. So I've been using the Vectorworks detail callout tool. I've been putting my details in there, so I can then start to bring in my details. This is a detail I brought in from another project. I can use all my lighting techniques in Vectorworks, so I don't have to learn two different programs. I can keep everything in the one program. I can light the building using all my textures from my other projects. Everything's kept together. Um, there's a question, why is Vectorworks better than Rhino? I don't use Rhino, so I don't really want to answer that question. Uh, the tools that I use today that are new to Vectorworks 2014, the only tool that I used that was new was the taper face tool. So if you're willing to accept you know, not to use the taper face, everything I did today you can do in Vectorworks 2012, 2013. Uh, the detail call out, I can't remember where that came in, but that's I think it's around about uh, 2012, something like that. I'm just having a look through the questions again. Um, Jonathan, Jonathan, the version you're using today is 2014, right? That's yes, it is. Questions. Yeah, I am using 2014 today. And the only tool that, that you don't have, if you don't have 2014, is the taper face tool, this one here. All the others you've got access to.
Somebody asked, why don't I use auto hybrid for the plan? Well, I could do, except then it binds the whole model, the whole building is then bound into one object. Um, I suppose that, that would be an opportunity, you could do that. But I just, I quite like that ability to um, create the views or to create the drawing in that way. Um, and I don't know if you noticed, but in this particular situation here, I've actually created a, a section line that goes through at a certain height and it jumps up the scene and goes through a different height. That's not something you can do with the taper face tool. So the taper, sorry, the, um, the auto hybrid. Um, I would prefer to keep the, this massing model out of auto hybrid, I think, for as long as possible so that I can keep pushing and pulling with it, adding extra bits to it and so on without having to go inside the auto hybrid object and create it that way. Someone wants to know if I can easily move the holes in the, in the tapered face. I sure can. Once you've created them, if you want to move them, this is a solid object. So you can grab hold of that object. It's a solid subtraction. So you can grab hold of the object used to create it, that one there, and you can actually create more of them if you wanted to. So let's put one in line with that midpoint there. So touch the midpoint, line up with that. So that's one there. I want to put one halfway between these two. So from there to there, and there's a midpoint there. And then select both of those and mirror them. Now when I exit, if I've done everything correctly, they should all line up. Let's just check. No, they don't. See, they've actually pulled them out of alignment. I've got to be careful about that. Good thing I checked. Now hopefully these will all line up as well. Let's just check that. I'll manage to drag them all one on top of each other. Okay, let's do that again. So starting on the plan view, let's drag that one so it lines up with the center. So touch that midpoint there. And now copy that one. So I should be able to mirror that one. Check from front view, make sure they're all correct, and that's better. So exit my solid subtraction, now I've got three holes. So you can move them. If you want to change one of these from a circle, you want to change that from a circle to a polygon, you can. Just make sure you select the circle and delete it. Exit the extrusion, exit my solid subtraction. You can make all changes, you know, all kinds of changes if you want. Jonathan, a lot of questions are coming in. I, yes, a lot of questions are coming in. I know you have an uh, engagement and I don't want to hold you. I know you have a life outside this webinar. So how about you pick one more question and then uh, we wrap it up and then we answer all the questions on our Novak blog and we format the okay. question and you take your time and you, I know you want to be very thorough but I also know that, um, yeah. I don't, want to, I don't want your computer to turn into a pumpkin on us. So um, I think I've answered nearly all the questions. There's a couple of okay. there's a couple of ones which is um, how do you get the shadows so well? I'm sorry, uh, it's RenderWorks. If you haven't got RenderWorks, you can't get shadows. And to get the shadows looking really good, it's just a lot of work. Okay, you got to you got to know how to use lighting. You got to know how to use uh, multiple lights. And um, having done that, VectorWorks does a pretty good job. I did lots of um, I just did lots of lighting on this. This is uh, I've been playing with this little file for a little while. This is this is actually the file I used to write the three D modeling manual that, that Barbara showed in the beginning. The three D modeling manual has all the instructions on how to create this model, and the reason I use this is because if you notice, it brings together lots and lots of the three D techniques that the rest of the manual covers. So my three D modeling manual teaches you how to use all of those tools and techniques. But then this exercise in the middle of the manual is to make you bring them all together so you learn how to use them. It's really important, I think, to, to, to have a, an, uh, an exercise like this one so you learn when to use one, then you, what to do next, what to do next, how they all come together so that you can model some really cool buildings in Victorworks. Well, they're lucky you wrote the manual, so <laughs> they can yeah. all go find it. 
great. Um, so I'm going to uh, take the screen now, make myself back the presenter, and then we're going to say our goodbyes. What do you think? That sounds great. Thanks, Barbara. Yeah. Oh, no, thank you. That's been um, a very thorough webinar. I have to say, you are so efficient. Do you guys uh, see my screen now? Yes? Yes. Um, so I want to thank everybody for uh, participating in this webinar. Uh, here's uh, where you can find the manual we just mentioned. Uh, it's at the Novage website, www.novage.com, and where you can find your updated version of all the vector work software you need. Uh, come visit us, and if you want to get more VectorWorks training, uh, visit Jonathan Pickup's own ArconCAD at uh, learn.arconcad.com. And don't forget to check out our blog uh, uh, to get technical advice, but also uh, discover who's on the edge of technology and design. Also, uh, check us out on Facebook and Google Plus and uh, Twitter. We're always there and, um, you know, we have great conversation going on. Next week, uh, actually two weeks from now, we're skipping one week, um, our next webinar will be rendering animation and the Keyshot Cloud. Discover all the tools of the new version of Keyshot. New interface, faster rendering options, powerful new animation features, and the all new Keyshot Cloud um, shown to you um, actually for the first time, I think uh, it's right after the release. So, uh, If you miss something, uh, you can check out uh, the recording of this webinar or a previous webinar on our YouTube and Vimeo channel under the name Novage. And today's presentation is free and is being recorded, so, uh, you know, if you uh, miss something or uh, if you want to revisit uh, some steps, uh, please um, go check us out in our channel. Thank you so much, Jonathan. It's been such a pleasure. Uh, your webinars are so smooth and um, flawless. I am really, I'm looking forward to the next one. Thanks very much, Barbara. It's a lot of fun to do these. If I can come up with another good idea like this one, um, I love doing these. Please, please let us know. We're always open uh, to your presentation. So thank you very much, and um, to the next Novage webinar. Uh, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Jonathan. Have a great day tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thanks In for our coming. tomorrow. Okay. Bye, bye.